Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Tier No, the Last Days of Europe, in which we're playing with Mr. Takagi. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and let us begin with Poison Cups for Thirsty Mouths. The Asuda building is a it's pretty from a distance. A glittering steel line endeavor built in Neo Art Deco style with sparse Japanese highlights. It was a breath of fresh air in the endless architectural drone of downtown Tokyo, a monument to the Japanese psyche, whether to its nobility or its insanity depended on the eye of the beholder. One could easily ignore the graffiti sprayed on its exterior, the angry crowds mobbing it day and night, and the police officers trying to keep the edifice safe. From a bird's eye view, Yasuda would always be pretty. This is what the man who would finally destroy Yasuda group thought. Sitting in the neon glare reflected in the taxi window as the protesters floated by in a smear of train raindrops. The man wrestling past the crowds and made his way into the lobby. Being slight and built, it took him a good five minutes to read through the masses. He entered the lobby's sprawling entrance, noting the burnished doors, and he took the elevator to the 37th floor. Padding through the carpeted floorboards, he made his way to the board of directors, opened his suitcase, and passed the assembled board members a sheet of paper, and that was it. Yasuda had been bought by his government for a steep price. That price was the arrest of most of its board, the chief officers, and the CEO, and the firing of its salary men in their hundreds and thousands, all floated away in the howling monsoon winds and rain through a stroke of the pen. They would join the rest of the losses in the storm bu buffeting Tokyo, one which would soon swallow Japan whole. But what hath the man if he gained the world but sell his soul? So, we are currently here. We have one day left for this, and our economy is looking not too bad. Less than minus 18 billion, but that's okay. Things happen, you know. <clears throat> I hope we don't get a crisis. I really don't. hope we don't. It looks like we're done training our army for now, which is pretty good. I think we actually made one ship. I already put it on one of these task forces. But I asked you guys yesterday which paths we should take, and we will get to that soon. I just want to make sure we can do some more anti-corruption stuff. But let's see. The poison of corruption. Corruption. <clears throat> It is the thing that permeates the fabric and functions of Japanese nation, or of the Japanese nation. As a corruption of that Hiroya Ino, so foolishly allowed to grow, took root in the apparatus of state. It slowly made its way into every other level of society. Not everyone is corrupt, of course, but the only truly ignorant can claim not to know of someone who is. It could be a corporate executive, a general in the army, or a member of the House of Representatives. Yet these days, it seems increasingly common that the corrupt one is somehow as mundane as, increasing, as a minor bureaucrat, or even as a salaryman. <clears throat> Even if the problem exists among leaders and the general populace alike, the matter is handled differently among each group. For many a general politician, bribery has become a normal part of any deal they make, having long since thrown away their transparency and commitments. For the average citizen, corruption is something that they must contend with at all times. A donation to the right person might allow them to receive a certain promotion or send their ch children to a better school. Not all are lucky enough to have the money for such privileges, however. In order to end the state of affairs, the Prime Minister has ordered that the corruption will be removed from the apparatus of the state so that it will no longer receive down through the rest of the nation. In response to this, two plans have been put forward. The first is to embark upon a full-scale investigation that will leave no stone unturned and no suspect unquestioned. The other plan is to focus our resources on either a legislative or army investiga investigation, as a more thorough search may prove better results. Corruption must be brought to an end. Oh, crap, no! Oh, there goes Himmler. Cool. So, uh, like I said earlier, <clears throat> basically... What you guys recommended from your comment section yesterday, or the comment section yesterday in the last video, what we're going to do is be as democratic as possible. That was the goal. So I asked you guys yesterday whether you should do co cooperation and compromise or strength and totality. And you guys overwhelmingly said that we should probably do cooperation and compromise. So, but we're going to keep doing uh, push for normalcy, grease the gears, easing nationalization. Our growth will grow, which is actually something I would really want to get. More public approval would be pretty good as well. Oh, over here, removability to our civilian factory. We're going to do this stuff, but I would like to get that growth first, maybe? Now, I asked you guys yesterday, it was targeted sweeps or no room for failure. And the way we're going to go with overwhelming support is no room for failure. No corruption. Zero corruption. Which, this looks cool and all. But I'm going to go and try to get a little more growth first. So, grease the gears. Deregulation is a fickle mistress, and the gradual dismantlement of decades-old cartels is an extremely risky exercise. However, we could gradually convince them that privatization, privatization would be ideal both from the perspective of national interest and firm profitability to this end. Minister Nakasone will meet with officials from the Zaibatsu and Keratsu, specifically outlining the increase in profitability in the long run as firms slide back from the diseconomies. 
just economies, just economies of scale. Of course, if these firms cannot be persuaded of the logic and mathematics and very the very generous private R&D research grants, there might be more under-the-table means of making the firms bend to our administration's will. No matter, Minister Nakasona, as an expert in the field of economics, in negotiation with the corporate giants, we would be wise and trust him with the necessary means to accomplish this. So, we're going to go down this way. We're going to get down here, because there's another comment from yesterday in the last, last video. Do the democracy stuff first, and do the, I think it was the army stuff as well, maybe? Like, over here. But there's also support for protecting our democracy versus our loyal army, which I'll get to when we actually get down there. But we want to get through stuff as quickly as possible, just because we might have to fight a, a great Asian war later on, which I don't think is actually in the game yet. But we're going to act like as if we have to, so. Ooh, not bad. Hey, almost minus 20 billion now. Nice. <clears throat> very, very good. 557 billion. We're almost at 400 billion in terms of total, total GDP, which is awesome. Guidance rate. Hey, and extreme environment training. Good. We can grab the next one as well, or actually the previous one, I should really say. And come over here. It is only 64, so we could probably grab some of this. Support weapons 5. Don't mind if we do. And let's, how, how are we doing on planes? And it's more specifically, helicopters. Are, helicopters aren't planes, no. No hard feelings, just business. The lawyers from Sumitomo are impeccably dressed. <clears throat> Hair done up in contemporary style. Suits procured from the finest tailors in Tokyo. Part of the art of finding tailors in Tokyo is, is that those who know the best never give the addresses to others on pain of death. It's a rich man's province, and briefcases made of the finest leather from Chinese cattle ranges. And they have in their papers the notices that will finally end Yasuda's death throes. In parting, Yasuda's temporary board shakes hands gingerly with the team in a sense of finality. Long, festering limbs are finally being amputated from the rotten corpse. It's almost peaceful. Sumitomo will have to deal with the fallout. And what if the rest of the Big Three, formerly Big Four, object? To the winner belongs the spoils, and Sumitomo uh, has determined that they are the definite winner here. The feeling of peace is rapidly disabused. disabused. The legal team steps out into a near riot. Disillusioned public and old Yasuda hands cut loose by the bailout, and the firm rivals are mobbing the police who are firing into the air. In the chaos, one of the members faints and his papers are grabbed by the mob and set afire. Yasuda might be dumb, but Japan is not done with Yasuda. Under the era of chaos begins. Oh boy. <laughs> the world is falling apart as we know it in 1964. But that's okay. How is uh, America doing, actually? They still have tricky. Oh, they still have tricky deck. Okay, cool. But we need to grease the gears first. How to guide to administration and government in Japan. So you want to be prime minister here. There's the first few steps you ought to take if you want success in that <clears throat> field. First, let's say you have a, a bill, a budget, infrastructure, anti-corruption measures. It doesn't matter what the bill contains, it won't change the results. So you got a bill you want to pass, but no one else does. You see, our ever humble public servants have found it to be most profitable to sell their votes. What you and I know as government is, in reality, an auction building. Our tax dollars flow up and, and into the blender of the diet to be distributed to whichever politician's vote is most important. You don't have to be rich to play the game to dance that fandango. Just use your second bank account, otherwise known as the treasury. Once your allies are salted with cash, time to move on to the hard balls. To get those dudes on board, whip out the pork barrel and start funneling cash into their hands for administrative purposes. All right, you still don't have the votes? Time to do some favors. Efficient regulation here, an unbanning of underground bureaucratic channels here. Uh, whatever needs to be shoved into the bill to get it passed. Keep ramming it in, nothing can go... R what, what? Was that the flash of a camera I heard? Uh-oh, the press is on your tail, Tom, to start flooding all the media channels you know with cash and hoping they don't release evidence of your corruption. But if they do release evidence, just claim that you and your cronies deserve the extra money for your hard and dedicated efforts in improving the nation. The bill's on the die floor now, and you ensure to pass. By the way, what was this bill about again? Who cares? Your job as an administrator has been fulfilled. Now let's move on to the House of Peers. Takagi grimaced as he read over the satirical comic. It was an underground publication backed by American money. Even so, large... Parts of it wrong true. Corruption was the ever-present specter in the legislative matters. No matter how much Takagi didn't want to be involved, he was forced to dance that fandango, as the comic stated, in order to be anything more than a figurehead prime minister. A methodology to, to the growth of rot. Our debt will rise a little bit. So be it. Modern industrial equipment will be replaced with cutting-edge industrial equipment. Cool. More resource efficiency gain, more construction speed, and more output. That's not too bad. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and grab this one, and then go back to the loft path. So... Easing and nationalization. While negotiations with firms themselves would be a tricky affair, our administration will have a freer hand in easing the nationalization of assets and firms which are already under government control. Cutting away unprofitable assets would be a good start, especially ones in far-flung regions such as Central China or the South Pacific. In addition, chipping away at the Sang Yo Hoko Kukai to chip away at the legacy of the national mobilization law will also increase our standing with the corporations, with no union dues to increase labor costs. 
Oh, which increased labor costs, even though the Sung Yo Hoku Kukai is merely a puppet. While this move would increase the support we would receive from private businesses, it would definitely draw the ire of the military and the reform bureaucrats who would definitely be opposed to loosening the state's grip over the industry's assets. We lose some political power. We get some more stability, so state controlled trade unions with non socialist trade unions allowed, which is sounds like directly from Victoria too. We get more better monthly poverty change, which is great, as well as industrial expertise, but we lose a little bit of factory output, but that's not too bad. I really want that growth. That's really why I'm doing this. Let's see, our debt will increase. Oh! God! Oh, the growth! Oh, no! Oh. I mean, the deficit is great, but our growth is going down. Oh, my God! The NHK! Oh, I'm. I did not even see the event pop up. Oh, my goodness. The NHK is Japan's prime state owned broadcasting corporation. Enjoys a near total dominance of Japanese media distribution and broadcasting from radio to television, from soap operas to sports broadcasting. The NHK is almost. An eponymous with the very idea of radio and television to the average Japanese, even more so following its deregulation in the aftermath of the Second World War. Of note, the NK chiefs, as chief executives have recently declared an expansion plan to further its broadcasting capabilities across the sphere. An ambitious plan, the NHK's official declaration enshrined the need to protect and to project and share cultural values in harmony of Japan all across the co-prosperity sphere as well as to promote the ideas of Pan-Asianism. The expansion ban was met with great approval from the Japanese populace at home and abroad. Finally, Japanese people can also view the wonders of the sphere from their own homes, such as viewing the Indonesian Football League, as well as the exploits of budding adventurer Naomi Umera, Umera recently heralded as being the youngest Japanese individual to hike in the far reaches of Tibet. Naturally, one only needs to dig a small distance below the surface to realize that the NHK's expansion abroad is merely another tool to extend Japanese hegemony. Even to the cultural sphere, Japanese programs receive five times the broadcasting hours of native language programs. All in all important communications, such as news broadcasts, are entirely in Japanese. Japanese culture is entering its golden age. Oh, who cares about the golden age? Ah! Why? Why? The hard times have yet to come. Oh my goodness, Mr. Nakamura, a hard-working father of two girls, dragged his feet through the door of his small home silently and with dread. He shrugged his coat off and threw it on a rack before pinching his nose and leaning against the closed front door. His family were distracted in the house, but he was suffering with panicking heartbeats and anxious, anxi singeing anxieties as he curled up the dark corners of his home. As a result of recent economic chaos raging throughout the empire, he was one of the countless salary men fired without a moment's notice as his employer sought to make cuts to survive, leaving him without a job or stable income. The news hollowed out his chest when it was no broken to him, and the thought of telling his family that they could no longer pay the bills he was killing him in every breathing second. They had very little savings, it would mean defaulting on the mortgage and going homeless. Two beautiful children and his loving wife in the streets because he couldn't look after them, he thought, defeated as his eyes glossed over. Barely putting himself together, Mr. Nakamura crawled out of the darkness of the hallway shadows and into the living room to embrace his daughters and kiss his wife. He held them tight, knowing that they that they were all he had left in this world. The walls of the room looked alien to him as he understood that they wouldn't be his for much longer. His lip quivered and throat stiffened. They would have to find out soon that he failed them as a father, as a husband, and as a man. It's been a bad day at work. Oh, goodness. No, no, no. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, that's cool for the annual deficit, but we are in such, like, a depression. Like, I, isn't, like... A recession, very, very low economic growth, but a depression, it's actually your GDP is retracting. Or, yeah, so I think that's what it is. But tremors. The bedraggled Colonel, now now Kai, sat in his office, reluctantly staring at his blank report. It had been weeks since he shipped out to his, his poop hole, or this poop hole, <laughs> attached to a newly composed regiment, forced to watch over them like toddlers. The island was everything he imagined his personal hell would be isolated, desolate, and most of all frozen from one end to another. Now Kai puffed a large a cloud of smoke for warmth and inscribed a few characters into the paper. It would only be for a few days, they assured him. You get a higher paycheck, they said. Now Kai scratched his cigarette on its tray before throwing the pen in frustration. Why did it have to be him? Of all the poor dudes that could have been sent here, why him, he asked, receiving no answers. His thoughts were interrupted when the bulb above swung vigorously and the table swayed rapidly. Instincts dictated that the colonel whip out his pistol and burst out of the office to scan the surroundings. As a flash of emergency lights blanketed in the dim, or the base in a dim red glow, sirens blared in the distance, drowning out almost all human noise. An American attacked? Now Kai thought? No. It would be too soon for that. His thoughts were cut short once more when the ground split beneath him, and only through quick reflexes he nearly saved. Uh, he, uh, was he nearly saved? Looking back, now Kwai saw his office swallowed in the earth. Looking to its sides, he saw silhouettes of men scurrying to and fro, some unfortunate soul slipping into the cracks, maybe too young to die this early. Looking around, now Kai saw the mighty runway rupture and crack into several pieces, causing chunks of asphalt to fly in the air, damaging any per pre material previously spared. Only after a few minutes did the shaking stop. The base was rendered unrecognizable. Electricity lines were cut or tangled together. Buildings were leveled or rapidly crumbling. The ground lay fractured with large gaps in several places. Now, I call laugh perhaps too loudly. It was really hell on Atsu 2. It sure be something to write about, though. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. 
The question of the stream. Mr. Nakamura, a hardworking father... Oh... Um... I think we read this, acquired the stream. Yeah, he, we, we read this one. He was one of the countless salary men fired without a moment's notice as his employer set to make Custer survive, leaving, leaving him without a job or stable income. So, yeah, we read about this, but he will be forgotten. As his lip quavered and throat stiffened, they would have to find out soon that he failed them, failed them as a father, husband, and as a man. Oh, boy. Man, you know what's serious when you get that event twice. That's pretty darn serious. Man, I, I just wanted... Oh, it already went down. I gotta cut the debt, because that's just too high. My goal is to get like 400 billion in terms of debt, but now my goal is like 700 billion. <laughs> no, 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 no. We gotta build. Oh, there goes Croatia. One, two, three. Yeah, we got actually a lot more room to build civilian factories here. We're running out of space here in Japan, though, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna do that. Oh, we can't build anything there. Uh, Sakhalin Islands. Ooh, I'm gonna build at least one more, though. Ooh, yeah, we'll build right there. That's fine. Actually, do we build Yeah, we are building something. So at least we're keeping two lines on infrastructure at all times. That'll be okay with us. Easy nationalization. Hopefully our growth goes up a little bit more. Hey, it's not minus 4.4 or 4.1. It's now minus 3.9, but... Uh... Oh, man. But we're going to do no room for failure. The Prime Minister is well aware of the extent of the corruption among Jap Japan's upper echelons. No pillar of power is therefore clean enough to be ignored by the audits and sweeps. This is an issue that has gone on for quite long enough, and no amount of political malpractice will go unchallenged. There is no room for that sort of behavior in their Prime Minister's new Japan, nor is there any room for failing to uncover it. In the coming weeks, political, noble, and intellectual circles will be all thoroughly investigated, leaving none of the uh, documents safe or bank accounts unexamined. Once we have gathered enough evidence of the graphs, we will not hesitate to make them public knowledge, nor we shall shy away from offering rewards to those that can provide us with more information, no matter what chaos our revelation may cause. We must bring this corruption to light. The ends more than justify the means. Cool. Oh, the, de de the deficit went down too. God dang it. Oh, that's not good. We are in a very not good place. At least we still have, you know, a deficit. A negative deficit. But I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. But pump A. The office room buzzed and churned as it usually did. Papers were shuffled to and fro, dragging in on in the class with anxious interns. Office regulars sat lazily at their desks, pecking at the keyboards, pretending to be hard at work. The scent of coffee and cigarettes choked the ventilation and printers whirled on in the background. The signs were at first ignored. A few countenance glanced worryingly at the stock market data screen, but neglected to investigate further. News clippings were scattered here and there, though everyone seemed to ignore the sections documenting the proposing state of stock the stock market. Now, the story could not be further from reality. Countless corporate buildings had fallen into chaos after the Yasuda crashed, with law enforcement regular patrolling the follow of the street skirmishes between security and redundant employees. Within the offices, shattered shards of glass cabinets skidded across the carpeted floors as employees broke into glasses, or gases. They prized off trophies they could get their hands on. People had stopped watching the percentages and prices. They'd rated it and stole what they could before they were, too were bankrupt as their former employees were. The sudden and shocking fall of the Asuda Corporation was predicted by few, and predict expected by even fewer across the islands of Japan, but all had come to see the, the taste, the starving hysteria of desperate fathers, brothers, and sons trying to save their skins and the economy's plunge or plummet to its doom. Careers making its doom. Doom. All right, everyone. Sorry about that, but a night she won't forget. Shh, my little bun. Please try to sleep for mommy. In the darkness of the night, a young mother rocked her crying baby in her small apartment, frantically trying to get him to sleep. She rubbed his fingers, tickled his belly, and sang him lullabies, but nothing would silence the wailing child she held in her arms. She had not. She had been awake for hours now, sweating and exhausted with a piercing migraine, despite to get her child at least quiet as well, so she too could sleep. Her husband, who was strangely not at home at such a late hour, had recently lost his job in the en masse layoffs of employees working for corporations struggling to survive the economic crisis, and could provide very little amounts of money for his family to survive off each day. As a result, the baby was hungry, but there was not enough food in the house to feed him. Her tucked, untucked breast was sore and chafed in the last-ditch attempts to, hours ago to feed her son, but to no avail. She could not provide the breast milk for her baby, and a sense of defeat loomed over her inebriated body. She continued to rock her re screaming baby in the darkened rooms of her dingy apartment, praying that her child would finally come to rest. But the cries only continued throughout the early morning. Drenched in sweat, her dirty nightgown hung over her tired shoulders as she could barely stand up for much longer. She threw herself back into a chair and rocked the baby with a drowsy passion, distressed and deliberated... De debilitated by her sufferings as an isolated mother and the dullness of the night. Quiet little one, mommy is here. I hope, I don't think I'm ever going to become a mommy, but you never know. Hey, who cares about the economic depression? We've got inf better infantry equipment. Nice. Oh, that GDP. Man, oh man. So I don't think we actually got the event for the Yusuda crisis, unless it's supposed to happen soon. Yeah, I'm considering slashing this, but even then, it won't really matter that much. So, the cost of the crash. Paris, 
Paris. Police sirens, lights twinkled, and the pattering rain falling down upon Tokyo's nighttime evening streets. The sky was a dark blue, upper castle with gloomy clouds, a castle of great shadow over the mighty city. A small crowd had gathered around a crime scene outside of Tokyo Stock Exchange building from behind blue wooden barriers, each guarded by a policeman in the drenched uh, raincoat. The chatter and murmur of passerby that filled the streets were drowned out by the splash of rainfall and the echoing of police car sirens. Behind the stretch tape, police barriers and patrolling law enforcement agents were the violently disfigured bodies of some of the Tokyo's top economists. They were public names, they had written in newspapers, spoken on TV, and were regulars in the facility. Now, however, their bodies were bludgeoned and pulverized in the black and puddle-ridden roads from the impact of leaping from the roof, in which the police department is considered a suicide pact between the men. According to the recent records, records over the last few weeks, their invested stocks and shares have plummeted in value since the crash, and their invested wealth have practically disappeared in more, mere moments. Mortgage defaults rates have skyrocketed. Banks have begun to fail as loans cannot be repaid. Entire corporations have declared bankruptcies. The most alarming of all reported homelessness and deaths have begun to fill up the official records for the most of the prefectures. The recent economic crises afflicting Japan have spawned many of the events across the empire, and although many big names in Japan remain reactive and following the effects of the turbulence, millions in the middle and working classes have been plunged into e conditions of a despairing economic depression. Examined and prodded by investigators, the men's lifeless bodies were left uncovered in the rain beneath the towering stock exchange building. Some deaths were calculated, some were not. So we don't have the crisis yet, the pop-up. But, you know, that's not worth it, man. Yeah, just because the numbers go down and you might lose your income doesn't mean it's, it's over. Hmm. Lose war support. Cleaning the cabinet. Investigating the think tanks. We'll probably do that one. The think tanks hold significant influence over policy making and economic decisions in Japan. Some are privately owned, used by a variety of Kertsu and Zaibatsu to bolster their financial fortunes. Others belong to sections of the Taisei Yokusanku, or Sankai, or to particularly wealthy independent politicians. The government, too, makes use of these think tanks for a variety of purposes, with so many sections of the political landscape making use of these organizations, any sign of corruption is most troublesome. Biased research brought on by bribery will prevent any significant reforms being made to the empire. Examining the operating procedures of the think tanks, and most importantly, checking where their funding is coming from is our top priority. The think tanks must be restored to their proper function. Lunch with the Diet. 1 o'clock, 25th of April, 1964. The Imperial Diet continues to baffle me, baffle me. Ever since I was chosen as Prime Minister, the issue has only grown more apparent. I seemingly cannot skip the corruption in the Diet. Even when attempting to introduce minor legislation, it appears that I have more work to do than I previously had thought. Earlier today, I had called the Diet together to discuss the matter of introducing standardized quality checks of farms across Japan. I thought to be a, a trifling matter that would not be take more than a few minutes to debate and uh, vote upon. Yet before I gave, even finished reading my own proposal, a series of loud objections were made quite clear to me by a cluster of liberals. I therefore believe that my proposal is now doomed due to the nagging and minute complaints of members of my own clique. Even so, the vote on the subject was to be held after lunch. There was still perhaps some hope that I could reassure the discredited representatives. I had taken to eating in the lunchroom as most others members of the diets did, mostly for the purpose of keeping an eye on my opponents, but also for the quality of the food. I was pleased to see the offending liberals there, as I had hoped to sit with them to resolve the matters before the vote, yet I was about to approach their table, I noticed that two others had joined them. These were the men that I was familiar with, most reliable politicians who believed firmly in my cause, observing from afar, I noticed the jovial nature of their conversation. It appeared that they had been beaten they had beaten me to implementing my own plan. However, just as the conversation broke off, I witnessed the quick transfer of paper money to the objecting liberals. I focused entirely on eating my food for the rest of the lunch. When the votes were tallied, it did not surprise me that when my proposal was approved by the Diet, it was, while it was a victory, I cannot help but feel disgust at its price. Corruption truly is everywhere. Oh, crap. No, I'm not touching that. No. Minus 5% political power gain? No. Stability goes down? No. I don't believe in that. Nope. We still got a lot of support for ourselves. Oh, that's good. Even though we do need to raise it because it's kind of war wary for now, and I don't want wary support. So we got to spend some political power. We got some more divisions. Use public support. Ooh, we want more of that. Yeah, we want to do that. There we go. Maybe I should go up. We'll see what happens. Wait, why did that open up? What the heck? Uh, I want you guys. There you go. Slowly making a bigger army. We'll see what happens. Diocletian on knees. He doubled over, sweat streaming off his forehead. A few coins spilled from his pockets, which he picked up out with pork sausage fingers. Wow, it wasn't enough. <clears throat> He looked up from the floor of the metro station, onlookers glaring in amusement and confusion. A couple passerby spat on him, and others laughed out loud in front of his gloomy figure. The sweat continued to roll. <clears throat> Forming a puddle beneath his heavy legs, he snatched a piece of cloth from his reeking tuxedo and wiped his forehead. It did little to alleviate the pers perspiring steam from his balding scalp. His glasses dropped to the floor, under which a 
commuter accidentally stomped forward, losing all hold. He pushed himself to his knees, groveling at the rest of his people passing by. Please, a few coins. I just need to get home, please. A crowd formed, whispering between themselves about the humiliating sight in front of them. A porky businessman, no doubt, fresh from the stock market floors. With a snap of the fingers, it was gone. A lifetime of investments and building up from speculation all vanished in an instant, and with it gone, the man had no choice but to display his shame to thousands for a few coins. The station was filled with rushing onlookers and commuters, but empty of any mercy or compassion, a young man with fire belling in his eyes stepped forward and whispered to whispered no. He then spat on the businessman's forehead, and with that, the crowd dispersed for the train. The businessman slumped back against the wall, dejected, and the split joining his sweat. A people's welcome. <clears throat> oh boy, things are getting really bad here. Really, really not. Boy, no. How further bad can this get? Oh, we don't even have a billion now. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta make sure this doesn't get too much higher than our GDP growth, which is getting smaller and smaller. Raids and redundancy. In the mid-afternoon, a great commotion sounded within, from within the blocks of the Yusuda Crisis, or Yusuda Office, uh, buildings in the districts of Western Tokyo. Crashes of metal and furniture sounded from above as shattered windows panes fell into the streets, exploded in a glittery array of glass daggers on the concrete pavement. Screams and wails followed, and roars of curious crowds gathered outside the Yusuda building had followed or surrounded the paved ent entrance to the offices. The police arrived at the scene a few minutes after the swaths of civilians had gathered to investigate the commotion. Instead of barriers to shepherd people away from the courtyard, suddenly another great cry came from the crowds as more great crashes and pounds came from the block just ahead of them. Former employees, clearly caught in fistfights and skirmishes in the building, scurried out of the main entrances or the main scurried out of the main entrance to the offices in front of the police, carrying trophies, watches, and other small valuables in their arms. They tumbled down the short steps at lightning speeds and dragged small trinkets and goods with them, presumably stolen from cabins to sell them at the market for much needed relief. The crowds gasped in horror to see the cl clamber across the courtyards, and the mere sight of such an outrageous chaos bewildered law enforcement attempting to calm down the crowds. There's no comfort in this poverty. Let's keep building, guys. Keep building. No matter what the stock market says, keep building. After that, we'll probably do cleaning the cabinet. The cabinet members make up some of the most influential politicians in the Japanese Empire. Parts of the cabinet have been selected by the Prime Minister, some of whom he would consider close and trusted allies. However, others thought. Uh, others... Wait. Ooh. Selected by... Parts of the cabinet have been selected by the Prime Minister, some of whom he would consider close and trusted allies. However... Others have earned their position through legal precedence out of the Prime Minister Takaki's control. This means that not even the cabinet is safe from the web of corruption that infests Japanese society. The Prime Minister cannot be expected to work effectively when his closest associates have potentially been brought out by his rivals, or bought out by his rivals. A quick and ruthless purge of the cabinet will take place, and with the purpose of eliminating anyone corrupt or even at risk of failing to set vice. Arresting resignations will soon take place, which we will make expressly public. The Prime Minister is sure that their shame will be fitting punishment enough. Oof. The Finances of Think Tanks Prime Minister, your the accountants have arrived with the documents from the think tanks you wanted them to examine. Prime Minister Takaki gestured for the aforementioned accountants to be let in. He expected perhaps two or three, but as six men entered his office, Takaki was admittedly somewhat confused. Yet as he gazed out of his office window, it became apparent that the six accountants would be indeed be needed. A second car pulled up at the steps, and the driver began to unload a number of large boxes, each one containing documents. I suppose that these are the financial files we'll be looking over, inquired the Prime Minister. The accountants replied with a respectful nod. Eventually, the seven or so boxes were delivered to the Prime Minister's office, so the work could begin immediately. It became apparent that the little effort had been put in properly organizing the documents. Although not directly involved in the process of organizing, Takagi would occasionally request an update on the progress. It would appear that the think tanks were trying to make this a challenge for us. We've had to reorganize everything in these boxes. Prime Minister, I believe it pertinent that you see this. Once you begin looking at the whole picture, you realize that this money simply pours in and out of these think tanks. They separated their budgets from the sections detailing the funding. Here you see they've accepted money from... The military, diet representatives, and a number of corporations, sir, chimed in another accountant. They've carefully hidden the real records within these ones. If he gives more time, we should be able to decipher more. Not wanting to let the think tanks go unpunished, Takagi agreed to let them take as much time as they needed. No wonder they were always trying to contradict me, muttered the Prime Minister to himself. Clearly, they didn't think enough about secrecy. Crud. Thrown away. Yaling clutched the slip, reading the text over and over again. Let go, let go to cut expenses. She leapt into the tiny window, into the... Falling snow, wondering if others like her shared the same fate. Under her feet was the suitcase, graciously provided by her captors. Perhaps there was a tinge of light in the darkness. Yao Ling heard the creaking of the door. Another woman walked into the room. Fang, clad clad in a simple dress, sat on the other side of the room. Did you get dismissed? Yao Ling held up the slip. Fang sighed. Something against the wall. No, they still want me, I think. Yao Ling could not figure out whether she felt bad or relieved for her friend. In truth, she believed Fang was feeling the same for her. I'm, I'm not sure if I could... If either of our situations are good, you can't speak Japanese and act like one. A pause frozen cold. 
descended upon the room, and I have to continue working here. Yelena not thought of the future. Outside of the woman's quarters, she had no connections, and barely enough money to last her a month. After she packed her meager belongings and went out into the cold, what would happen next? Could she even go back home? Only fate knows my future. I, I hope we'll meet again. Yelena's eyes watered as her head pounded from holding the tears back. Sniffling, she continued, You're a good woman, Fang. Hope you'll do well. She nodded, sensing that she, she should leave. Yelena kneeled in front of her bed, opening this briefcase and packed her clothes. After today, she would go to the wolves. If human life is pr priceless, why are so many thrown away? Because they can be. Hmm. Yep. This this is not a good era, era of Japan for us. I thought we were supposed to hit a golden era. Maybe for cartoons and political stuff, but hmm. To the wolves. Fr fresh nose cover the sidewalks of the city as Yaoling shivered her threadbare coat practically unusable. Snowflakes fell on her hair, clinging under the strands. She walked by restaurants where patrons enjoyed warm food and drink. Oh, how yelling anguish. In her fitful dreams, when she was not relieving years of horror, she dreamed of a better life, free from her memories, just free to live. <clears throat> free to live, the promises she brought her here. She looked to the wind into the window of a closed door, staring at her reflection. The years had sapped her youth and strength. If only I didn't fall for those lies, she thought for and Forlornly, she dissolved her reflection, not wanting to relieve the cruel past. Yelling, trudged on, a hope abandoning her soul. Walking past the other pedestrians, she, re she received strange looks. She looked away from any men and women, whispered as soon as they saw her. In her heart, she knew why they did not know her previous profession. They, she wished she didn't. But her appearance was one not of poverty. Her face was dirty, her hair uncombed, and eyes bagged. Not even the poorest, cast off by the current crisis, spared any sympathy for the woman. All Yaling could speak was silence. She couldn't communicate, for Japanese was lost on her. All she could see was indifference to her situation, memories of only discomfort. And all she could hear was her heart breaking, the wind picking up, buffeting her with more cold. Yaling could only walk against it. There is suffering too terrible to name. Oh, but, hey, look at that, dockyards. Well, who cares about the people when we can? Have more ships. Oh, I didn't even look at this stuff yet. Yamato. T -t 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 -t. Bigger number means better stuff, right? Standard stuff. Cool. Uh, deck armor is cool and all, but let's get more hangar space. That's better. And we don't have any adapted stuff. I just want to double check this just because I have not done this at all yet. That's good. If we do that, that's, that's not bad, but... Actually, you go faster, and it costs way more fuel for this. But since we're Japan, I'm not going to switch it out, so. And secondary. Uh, seven, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Cool. The higher the number, the better, right? There you go. Make another carrier, because we could probably use it. 9 out of 14, and then we'll probably grab <clears throat> the Yamato class here. I'm not even going to bother looking at this too much. Battleship armor, yeah. We're going to choose that one. There you go. Breast calling. From the general chaos of the former pact, a message from Breast has reached us. The Breast and Republic informs us that they've broken free of German rule and amongst the first tasks of free nation. They've chosen to contact a number of leading world powers. The broadcasts are considered as mere declarations of independence for the international community, not as demands for recon recognition of the independence for Britain. Despite the chaotic nature in Germany, it remains to be seen if the Brents can hold on to their newfound freedom. Congratulations, I suppose. You know what? Here's a question to you guys. For those of you who have played as Britney, how do you play as Britney? Let me know in the comments below because I'm really interested in playing as them someday. But it just seems extremely money oriented, and that's pretty much all you do. But let me know in the comments below. How do you play Brittany? And we'll finish our land auction with air to ground task forces. Cool. Hmm, big sadness. Getting the cabinet, we got 10 days left. Maybe we'll get another event about Yaling. Maybe, maybe not. And Germany's a f on just on fire right now. Woo! Very nice. Oh, living with the unimaginable. The sea breeze brought about it with a sea a smell of salt, giving Yelling a moment of peace. I knew we'd talk about Yelling some more. Her dress fluttered as her hair dried in the wind, and now she reminded herself, breathe in, as she took a breath, deep breath, and breathe out. The docks in the early morning were her favorite place. From their vantage point, she could see the golden sun rise. Sitting on top of her suitcase, she could see a disc of orange slowly rising. Perhaps not the wisest choice. It did sting to look at such light, but it wasn't like she could last long here. In the distance, voices. Male voices. The workers were here for their shift. Looking behind her, she could see that they were deep in conversation. She could escape. Picking up the suitcase, she darted be behind a shipping container, hoping they didn't notice her. Yelling steeled herself in case they no not again. Breathe in, breathe out. She reminded herself panic wouldn't help her get away from the men. The men stopped in between her container and the opposite one. Yelling could only look at them in terror, as she was frozen solid. A slight look, just a slight turn in her worst fears would attack her again. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. She shivered. Her art... Her heart beating like artillery in the battlefield. The men disappeared to the front of her container. Yelling slumped down and put her face in her hands, hot tears flowing down her face. When you're drowning, it feels easier to swim out. 
Oh boy. Oh boy, man. I would not want to be in Eastern Europe. At least in Japan, Europe, things aren't great, but... <clears throat> we could be killing each other. At least some guys are just killing... Never mind, I'm not going to say that. But anyways. <clears throat> Unauthorized cabinet members. Prime Minister Takagi had grown accustomed to eating in the lunchroom of the Imperial Diet Building. While the food was much richer than that which he had been served during his time in the Navy, Takagi could not say that he found it unpleasant. He had similar feelings about the decor, but unlike the food, the design was not to his taste. Regardless, he ate his meals without complaint and focused most uncasually absorbing the other members of the Diet from the strategic placement of this cabinet minister table. He could now recognize virtually anyone who regularly ate in the lunchroom, whether they were representative or a peer. It therefore came as a surprise to him when the two men that he had never seen before sat down at the table for cabinet members, as if that had been their dining table since birth. They clearly knew each other as Takagi observed their relaxed and cheery conversation from a few feet away. His gaze did not break from the pair, even as the conversation tried to turn to idle chatter upon staring, starting their meal. Eventually, they noticed the Prime Minister staring at them, clearly put off by the look they were getting from Takagi. They suddenly greeted him with a respectful nod, and they hastily finished their meal in silence. The Prime Minister returned to his office, considering the offensive sight he had witnessed. There was no doubt that they were new members of this cabinet, or they would not have dared to breach decorum by occupying the cabinet table. Yet Takagi had not appointed them to the, his cabinet. He certainly never would, based off their behavior in the lunchroom. No, someone else had selected these two for the cabinet positions without informing him. While intending to eventually discover the perpetrator, the Prime Minister was in more truth. More concerned with finding an excuse to get rid of his unwanted subordinates. Once he replaced them with suitable choices, the message would be quite cl quite clear enough. Oh crap. And so, two short tenures and in the cabinet. <clears throat> Publicize the findings. Oh boy, I don't want to do that one. Auditing the Kazuku. The Kazuku are the nobility of the Japanese Empire. Their status grants some of them... Permanent seats in the House of Peers, making them powerful figures with long-lasting political influence. Their status as nobility also provides them with a natural close proximity to an affinity for the Chrysanthemum throne. However, their membership among the nobility does not mean that the peers are above accepting bribes or engaging in the other corrupt activities. In fact, many an impoverished noble has been known to sell their political integrity in order to gain any amount of yen. That is not to say that wealthy nobles are exempt from this behavior. Indeed, many of their numbers are just as guilty. This can go on for no longer. The upper house of the imperial diet cannot be allowed to be a nest of corruption any longer. The prime minister's audit will remind the peers of behavior befitting their status. Which reminds me, let's come back over here. 24%. Oh, crap. House appears. Oh boy. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, Nixon resigns. Cool. At least the Americans are having problems too, so. On to propaganda campaign. Ooh. Let's see what happens. Use the public. We want more. Does this actually help us? Now we're out of political power. No, it doesn't look like it actually helps us at all. How's this looking? Eh, we don't want to deal with that for now. Cool. Things are a, just a giant mess. I wonder if we're going to hear any more about yelling now. Hopefully we do. Kind of interesting. Oh, Israel here. How's Israel doing under Mr. Begin? 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 Kill, huh? Oh, we only get 0.64, which could be worse. Actually, that could be much, much worse. But after that, we'll do negotiating for more information. Why not? It's embarrassing to say it, but most of the corruption we are fighting has been known to us for quite a while. In fact, it takes a little more than a brief conversation with most officials to figure out if they are corrupt or not. The hard part is not proving who is guilty. The hard part is proving what they have done. The guilty officials, unfortunately, are smart enough to avoid accepting bribes or grafts where we catch them. Fortunately for us, there are those who are willing to provide us with the exact information we need. These individuals, although anonymous, have intimate details of transactions that have taken place behind closed doors in return for the cooperation. They have requested to receive certain privileges and protections. No matter what they ask for, we will be fools not to accept the K Kozaku's turn. <clears throat> Commissioner Manaka has faced many people who resisted his office jurisdiction, whether they be surely, surly defense ministers, youthful aides lying through their teeth, or a thumb twiddling scientists explaining how a project quite literally went up in flames. But the uptight nobility of the Maiji era were not the audience he was suspected to meet with. Most of the fading aristocrats <clears throat> sent their estate managers to deliver their records, though a few showed up to personally meet with the lower level auditors, often with complaints of how Takaki showed no respect for the greatest families of Japan. Even some of the commissioner's own subordinates were bearing or buying into the claims of unjust inspection. The ones who first began to question the legality was rather plain auditor from Sapporo. His records show no mention of affiliation with radicals or the Kazoku. He even threatened to speak with a ja number of Japanese news agencies that the supposed purging of Japan's old families provided the Prime Minister with a slush fund. From the perspective of the average citizen, the agitator's case seemed sound, but the Commissioner had not spent decades of work to just let public opinion inter interfere now. The board audits was already a name reviled as much as any criminal gang to many. 
Despite all this, nobody, not even the descendants of the leg legendary heroes of Japan, would be above a financial review. He quickly wrote up a notice to support to report his subordinate, then moved on to the next family on the list. Every privilege comes with a responsibility after all. We still got some good, some, some good support here. And it's technically going up, because I think Takagi does give us, yeah, more daily authoritarian support, even though it's very, very, very tiny. But at least it's going up, which is a good, well, it just went down. God dang it. <clears throat> it is still technically going up, so that's good. How are we building? We're building more, more and more roads, which is a good thing. But... Still, still, still. Shanghai, as well as, how about, Chintao. Oh, and there goes Speer. I still need to play Germany again sometime. Lozano elected Prime Minister, or El President of Mexico. Very cool. And then we'll have some Support Weapons 5, which would be great. And then we'll probably go at, oh, I don't want to do that. No, I don't really want to do that one. Let's go ahead and go to... Infiltration Specialization. We get more attack and movement for our special forces. Oh, not President Kennedy. Not Daddy Kennedy. Nice. Ooh, this one's done as well. Nice. And we'll grab, not that one, because that'd be two headed time. Instead, can we get some artillery? You know, we can't. Armor. I should really probably focus a little bit more on armor. Helicopter stuff? That's no. Engineering? Probably not. Eh. We'll grab because we can. It doesn't really matter what we research too much. Good, good, good. And then we should be publicizing the findings. Oh no! The old methods of punishment are not enough to deal with the current corruption crisis. While many will learn from the mistakes, others will shrink back into the shadows, biding their time before returning to the old ways. Criminal records seem to fade away far too quickly for these corrupt officials and businessmen. The privacy that they are, that they are afforded is a shield that Prime Minister Takagi will no longer tolerate. The public is mostly unaware of those who exactly are responsible for the corruption that grips the empire. We will uncover more information about this epidemic, and we will begin to publicize our findings. The people of Japan deserve to know exactly who is engaging in corrupt and honorable behavior. This will forever disgrace the guilty figures, and we are sure that many of them would be willing to strike deals with us, lest we be thrown to the mob. <clears throat> we lose stability and even more political power. Oh, why do you want to hurt me so much? Because Japan has been very corrupt. But hey, the poverty rate is still going, getting better. It's still getting better. At least it's not going down. Is anything else going down? Hopefully not. Cutting edge industrial industry? I mean, we're at the top here, which is great. How about the expertise, though? It's going up slightly as well, which, not very much, which basically means nothing, but that's okay. Hey, look, just keep cutting it down, because this keeps going down. At least it's not going down, down by too much, so at least we can be assured by, with that. What do we, no template for what? Oh, we're producing APCs. Well, we don't have enough army XP to do anything with it, so. Oh, my God. That's stability. Weekly change. Oh, I forgot to look at stability. I totally forgot to look at that. Holy crud. Oh my goodness, minus 61%. Holy cow, but we're going to revoke the grass. Then we get more political power and we have a new source of income. Far too much money has been wasted on bought-out bureaucrats and bribed officials. The profiteering and corruption is a thorn in the side of the Japanese Empire. Until now, we have simply arrested and imprisoned the guilty persons. It appears, however, that this is not enough to dissuade them. Many use their yen to live out their days in prison in relative comfort. Others have used their ill-gotten money to escape our reach. Now is the time to cut them off from their power. Now, the money that they received never should have been accepted in the first place, and it will be given to the state. We are sure that we can put it to better use anyways. Without their grafts, the recently imprisoned businessmen and officials are surely to suffer the consequences of their crimes to the fullest. Whether they are to rot away in prison for the rest of their lives or eventually be released, the Prime Minister thinks it's best to ensure that they experience some sort of hardship. A brother's debacle. Brother! Would you look? take a look at this? Teruya, Teruya, Teru, had hoped to get his brother's attention while the, with the article he was reading in the newspaper. Teru Kenichi was unfortunately engrossed in a thrilling documentary about Japanese wildlife and ignored Teru. Kenichi, this is generally important. The Prime Minister had just announced that several think tanks have been taking money from journals and corporations. Kenichi dismissed his older brother's concern as another overreaction to what had probably been an open secret for ages. Taken slightly aback with his younger brother had once again dismissed the news. Teru, Teruyo stated that the only once again proved that the Prime Minister was truly committed to reform. This has not been the first time he exposed high-level corruption after all. Why else would he be so publicly share something that affects even the most secretive parts of his society? Clearly annoyed with his brother's insistence. Kenichi finally turned to look at Teru. All you've done since graduating from university is sit at home and read the papers. There's a whole world out there. Go out and find a job. I feel like he's speaking to me directly. Sensing his cause was quite lost. Teru returned to his newspaper. He probably did need a job, but certainly take his mind off things. His job listings proved quite boring and disheartening until he came upon the last thing he could have quite possibly expected. One of the think tanks was searching for a junior economist. It looks like the degree might finally pay off, huh? The older brother tossed the paper towards his sibling, who proceeded to pick it up after nearly missing the TV. Well, Teru, if you want to find out 
oh my goodness, to find out if the think tanks are as bad as the prime ministers say they are, you're, now's your chance. Elizabeth Bay isn't half bad either. Oh, shnikes. Shnikerinos. Why must you pain me so much? Ah. Yeah, it's time to build even more stuff. Thank you. We're going to build in China. That'd be good. We still got two lines going for infrastructure, which is great, great, great. So, there's quite a bit of compliance here. There's still a little bit of resistance, but that's fine. So, this is Xiao Liao. Original molding, elected. Who? Interesting. Birmingham, huh? Well, Macmillan's leading. The state of the English military. I gotta play as England again sometime. Ooh, that is new. Medium conservative bias. That is definitely new. A promising future. I. Eh, well, we'll see what happens. Hey, that's getting better. Look at that. That's not bad. That's better. That's much better. Minus almost roughly 12 billion a year. I will gladly take that. And we can probably do election fraud, army payrolls. Oof. I think the next one we'll do is the problem of sectarianism, just because I said we would go down this path. The Yoko Sankai is not nearly a cumbersome beast. It is a four-headed hydro composed of factions that are opposed to each other. Our fellow liberals, the reform bureaucrats, the conservatives, and the independents. Above all, the military scepter remains held above our heads. We can, however, take advantage of this infighting by choosing who we appeal to and what hand we play in the diet. Hopefully, by focusing on the right approach with the right methods, we can turn the sectarianism within the diet again against our opponents and to our game. It is then of utmost importance that we decide who should we ally with and who we shall lead to the dogs. Broadly speaking, for all the differences we have, Ikeda's and conservatives are all most likely to lean towards us. For both our factions, are moderates compared to the unpredictable, radical nature of the Ketoites and the Reform bureaucrats. Ooh, this is just... A hey, that's even better then! Now, nice! That's even better. Great! Got slightly more income. Not bad. Our political power is slightly better, even though it actually went down before, but we don't need to talk about that. Uh, air supremacy, air superiority. Mm, which one helps us with helicopters? We'll probably do the helicopter one, right? Air detection, interceptors, interceptors. I don't use interceptors, so this stuff seems okay. Air parity. Fighters, interceptors, Oh, we got helicopters up here. Agility and ground attack. I like the agility and ground attack a lot. Provide air support for use in the field. Cool. Control the skies, maintaining air superiority wherever possible. Let's see. Helicopters, even more ground attack. Where can we get ground attack, ground attack? Air defense. I like the air defense. That's not bad. Hmm, tactical bombers, missile ranges. Yeah, I don't really care about that stuff. Stealth. How about down here? This looks pretty good too, though. And this does go for both sides. Ooh. Mm. Global force? Well, we're not really global force, but I think that probably makes sense. Let's go with global force, because we can. Man. Well, as bad as it has been, it's this could actually be a lot less a lot lot worse. Like so much worse. And we still have the show Emperor, which is kinda nice. And monthly tension goes down, which is good. Oh, goodness, that is not good. This goes down. Everyone's getting more support here. Oh, I hope they don't overthrow us. That would not be pretty good. I'm not sure what we can do here, because it's still weak. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's a good time to go down this path, because we need some more, like, a pu public approval. And the support of the House of Peers decreases somewhat. Ooh, we need more public approval, though. Peers goes down. Conservative faction power increases, but... Ooh. Begin the second phase. Strength and totality would be really good to do, though, as well. And the Siege Mentality. Hopefully no one gets rid of us, though. It's the House of Peers. Public Approval. That's not bad. We need more House of Peers support. Ugh. So, we got, well, since you guys recommended this path, we're going to go down this path. So, we could choose to play a lighter hand against the fa other factions within the Diet. And at the same time, leverage the idealism of our faction's backers outside the Diet. To this end, we should promote our reformism through the lunches of cooperation and compromise, using the goodwill of the other people of the Diet. However, this would lead to watering down some of our reforms down the line. We would need to play... To the tune of other factions more closely, if we were to go down this path, wrangling allies and enemies. The Taisei Yoku Sankai is in a sorry state. After the years have gone by, the divides between our party factions have grown only deeper. Infighting and petty bickering are the norm, and it's sometimes hard to tell what the most of the diet is in fact working under the same banner. Even with the unified support base to back the Prime Minister, we cannot simply ignore the rest of the uh, Yoku Sankai. Their support will be necessary upon occasion, so disregarding the remaining conservatives and the reformed bureaucrats will be of little to no gain to us now. They will need to be dealt with, either through compromise and placation, uh, Application or through enforcing our will upon them without restraint. A pair of plans have been therefore put forward by the two main branches of the Prime Minister Kakaki's faction. 
Quito, as well as a number of members of the liberal old guard have backed a series of compromises aimed at winning over more of the opposition within the Yoku Senkai. They have to simultaneously pick up the mantle of the conservatives while also appealing to the reform bureaucrats' desire for extensive change. The liberal new guard, made up of newer, more radical members of the dots, such as Yakasona Yashuhiro, have argued that compromising now would be a grave mistake instead. The prime minister would be better off leaving his mandate unhinged and instead focusing on bringing in more representatives into the liberal cause directly. Now Prime Minister Takagi must be sele must select which plan to go forward with. To unite by friendship or by force. Well, you guys recommended we go with uh, uh, compromising, so that's what the path we're going to go. Very, very good. Uh, cool. 300 factories, it's not enough. Hey, a billion, nice! That is really good. I should be really in investing in my GDP, but that debt, it's... I, I can't get it d double of what we have for our current GDP, so I just I can't imagine doing that. I just, I, just, I just can't. In good conscience, I cannot do that. We're going to actually focus a little bit more on infrastructure now, since we already have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 lines already working on civilian factories, which is great and all, and I love it, but... It's probably good to build up for the future as well. So, let's go ahead and read the next one. Continuing his legacy, we get more stability. Ooh, I don't want to lower our support at all, though. I do want to do some of this stuff. Infrastructure construction speed would actually be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I need to do some of this stuff. Resource efficiency gain. Ooh, that's not bad either. A question of labor. Ooh. Excessive workforce. I like that. Keeping our fingers on the scale. Solidifying our practice, that's not bad. <sighs> army payrolls. Election fraud, protecting our democracy. A loyal army. You know what? I think we're going to finish this path down here. As much as I want to do this path, we're going to go finish this. And honestly, at the time of this recording, it is split for both support. But since we're trying to reform, kind of get a of corruption and try to be a democracy, I think we gotta go with election fraud. The Taisei Yoko Sankai exists to ensure stability and control by preventing party politics and factional bickering. The YSK may be the only party represented in the imperial diet, but several independent representatives exist that are considered non-endorsed by the party. This eclectic mixture of former YSK members, pacifists, and other opponents to our rule has managed to survive election after election ever since the foundation of our party in 1940. Despite the inconsistent nature of their pol political existence, independent leader Takeo Miki is clamoring about electoral fraud. While we are no supporters of the opposition, it would be foolish to allow the rumors to go unchecked any longer. Besides, we might just win every seat in the diet if the Prime Minister resolves the issue. Cooperation compromise. Aid has never been much given much privy to the, what the Prime Minister discussed in the secret rooms. He was certainly surprised that his employer made it to his op to this op to this position, and since the Admiral is largely disregarded in the Imperial Diet as the ringleader of a fringe group, relevant enough to join in a coalition, but not enough to be considered a contender for the position of Prime Minister, perhaps because of his success, Takaki decided to let his long-standing advisor in on the discussion at hand. In a stately room about a platter of appetizers, Takaki is so chu Sokichi had gathered his attendants and a few representatives from the Diet. In the current speech, he outlined the main issue of his government would face, their liberation for the Japanese stock ec ec economic market, riled up many representatives who got their seats with heavy donations from the industrialists and military. While some, such as the Sanctum of Prince Kono's conservatives would be hard to appeal to, other cliques in the party responded well to the feeblers that the Prime Minister sent out. And above all, we have to emphasize that unlike Kido, we are willing to strike a fair deal with potential backers in the Diet. If I've learned anything from the oldest members, platforms can be forgotten more easily than insults. The game has only just begun. Hopefully we can do well here. Oh my goodness. We don't even have political power to raise our um, good stuff. Ooh. Hey, look. Nice. Awesome. Let's go put you on here. That'd be great. Get some more research and then we'll talk about the party platform and stuff. Or support, really. Naval stuff. You know what? Doing this, if we get a, into a war against the Allies, we're probably going to end up dying. So doing naval doctrine stuff probably doesn't matter too much, honestly. Let's, eh, let's do some field hospitals because we can't. So, Honestly, I don't know how this is going to work. We don't have a lot of support. So if things go poorly, I might have to do stuff off screen to make sure that we can keep doing our reforms. Because we don't have a lot of support for, in the House of Peers. And actually, we got our public approval up to above 30%, which is not bad. So, which is pretty good. But the House of Peers is not very good. Which means we should probably actually start limiting other people's support here. Which actually probably would help us more than trying to raise our own support. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't have any political power. Or we have very, very little. So... We'll see what happens, because this is not very good. Mm, good, good, good. Election fraud. Allow for public observations. Auditing the independence. Cool. Let's see. 
We might as well. So far, we have focused almost entirely on investigating our own parliamentary faction for signs of corruption. Now that we've mostly finished our examinations there, it's time that we look across the aisle to ensure that the entire diet is free of deceit and fraud. Unlike faction of the YSK, who are at least willing to subject themselves to audits for, disappear for appearance's sake, the Independents are fiercely distrustful of us. They see any attempt to investigate them as, as an attempt to stifle their limited influence, yet as many of the Independents and immensely wealthy figures, such as the Royochi Sasakawa, it would be wise to examine their finances. Oh, hello, Goring. Hello. Prime Minister Taka... Uh, Takagi will push ahead with this audit of the opposition, as it has been said. Why do they resist the audit if they have nothing to hide? Whether we find corruption or not, we will gain peace of mind. And auditing is always good to do, just in case to find corruption and stuff like that, but a shift within Japanese democracy. Elections were an inconsistent manner in the Empire of Japan. Up until recently, they had not been held at regular intervals, instead occurring entirely upon the whims of the government. The results of the vote were often dubious, too, although the level of interference was ultimately decided by the Prime Minister and the wider Taisei Yoko Sankai. Usually, this took the form of intimidating independent candidates or making last-minute changes to polling stations and minor electoral regulations. Prime Minister Takagi had, until recently, largely focused his attention on other matters, but now reported arrived on his desk. It seemed that he would have to consider the future of the Japanese electoral process. The report outlined possible ways that a potential future election could be rigged in favor of the government. It would work, there was no question about that in Takagi's mind. However, as the public was more aware of the previous electoral fraud, Takagi would certainly suffer a blow to his standing with the populace. Realizing they could no longer or not possibly make a decision or whether on whether to commit to the plan now, the Prime Minister dismissed the advisors in his room and bade them return in the afternoon. In truth, losing face with the public was not something Takagi wished to deal with. He had worked hard to earn the trust of the population that had grown tired by the years of negligent governments and army obstruction. Yet this downside was in many ways a tactical loss rather than a strategic one. It took if Takagi increased his strength in the Imperial Diet, then he would be far more capable of implementing his own reforms. Many of said reforms would go a long way in improving the lives of Japanese people. Prime Minister Takagi was now sure of his choice. He would guarantee that the election produced a grand victory, and, and then to do all was in his power to make sure that he did not waste such a golden opportunity. The long-term strategy wins out. Crap. That's not good. That is not good. <sighs> We're back down there. God dang it. Hopefully we can keep doing well. That's my goal. Just keep doing well. Minus 390, but a Chinese request. To the Japanese government, following the success of the Pan-Asianist cause in securing and defeating the rebels in Yunnan, it is with this humble letter that we intend to request that the administration of the territory be handed to the Republic of China. At the face of it, we, the Chinese government, might seem brazen. It is, of course, undeniable that the Japanese government might provide us invaluable support both moral and material. The people of Japan wish to, therefore, return in the favor. The Republican government understands that its Japanese counterpart is currently reeling from financial troubles caused by an internal crisis. It is our good faith to assist Japan by taking over the administrations of Zikang, Zikang, and Yunnan. We believe that it is the best outcome for both worlds. China regains territory that has been given so much trouble for while saving the government of Japan from any expense that we may incur during the process of occupation. We, are here, we hope to hear from you soon. Signed, Gao Zongwu. So, in the last video, these guys united, I believe, Yunnan and Whoever was over here, boys who? So let's see, give them what they ask for. Receive modern equipment. Give them what they deserve. Receive outdated and dysfunctional equipment, reducing bonuses to excavation efficiency. Hmm. You know what? We'll give them. They're a good ally puppet for now, so. If we can help them out, so be it. So be it. Oppose the cartels with gun. Not bad, not bad. Other expenditures, 2 billion. Hopefully we can do well here, and we have the public Republic of Vietnam. Oh, we're still down here. I have not even moved my divisions at all, but German intervention in Africa. Oh, boy. Oh, with Goring winning. Oh, crud. Oh, maybe I should have put on the sub-mod that actually makes Goring work well, because he's, at the time of this recording, I think he's still a little bugged, and I don't have the sub-mod that fixes him, so... We'll see what happens. If he gets a little bugged, I'll hopefully check off-screen to make sure he's doing okay, but we'll see what happens. So, auditing the independence. Reducing Toko presence. Oh, so basically, cost goes down, public approval goes up, we lose political power, stability, encryption, and civilian intentions to others, but we get more stability. So that's pretty good. The Toku Betsu KT Kitatsu, or higher special special higher police, a civilian counterpart of the Kempai Tai. Their duties involved counter-espionage and the high-level criminal investigations. In the early 20th century, the Toku were often involved in curtailing the actions of political opponents of the Japanese Empire. However, the days when the Japanese Communist Party imposed a threat are long gone, and there's been little in the way of ideological resistance to our rule since the war. Otoko spends most of their time in the present intimidating non-endorsed politicians, particularly during elections. This is by no means a secret to the general public who see the Toko as a stain upon the nation's claim to democratic rule. The Prime Minister therefore wishes to reduce the role of the Toku, keeping them away from the public eye. If they are to do more harm than good, then he thinks it is best that they may keep on a much shorter leash. Auditing the independence now. 
Shall we proceed with the list, sir? Tonkagi's assistant offered the Prime Minister the first of many files that had been stacked high on his desk. Those were the audits that had been conducted on each and every independent in the House of Representatives. The audits had y yielded plenty of evidence against certain independents, but it was ultimately up to Takagi to decide what, what would become of them. The first file pertained to a man he recognized. He had been a promising naval officer whose career had been cut short by sending a desire to play politics. Takagi considered him a good friend, even if they did have their disagreements on policy. I needn't say they would be stupid to execute and imprison every independent. I think I'll select a few of them at random. That should produce the desired effect. Takagi continued his examination of the audits. He came across a few more friends, some of whom had crossed the line on a few occasions. Regardless, the Prime Minister had quickly passed them into the pile of those who would be spared. Most of the other independents were not men who he knew well, but little more than nuisances in his mind. Seeing a few of the men to prison would lose the Prime Minister no sleep. Some of the oddest had produced very little in the way of evidence, while others contained solid proof of treason. Either way, Takaki selected them at random with, no, and with an efficient pace. It was only when he read the file of another one of his friends that he paused. He was another naval officer. <clears throat> Although his career had been much longer, he turned to politics after retiring from the Navy as an independent. His focus had been on local politics for a small rural community in Yamagata. He had appeared that he had made some deals with foreign companies and used his connections in the Navy to smuggle them Japanese goods. Takagi, Takagi was deeply disturbed by the actions of his trusted friend. He all but dropped the file into the pile of the guilty. Before reconsidering it and placing it on the opposite sack, he'll learn his lesson, the Prime Minister thought to himself. A better friend than he'll ever know. At least we get some more house uh, support. That would be better, but still not great. So, if I do, let's say, Kaya, and if I do discredit faction, we, sh we should get more support in the house, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Can we do it? No, we actually, we lost support. Whoopsie. So, we'll see what happens in the future. Oh, well. Alright, up next. Improve fire control systems, because we can. We're just going to research whatever we can. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If we get em end up into a war, either we'll win against, like, warlords, or... We'll end up in a thermonuclear war. So we'll see what happens. Very, very good. And after this, we're going to do allow for public observations. For our efforts to eliminate cor corruption and fraud to be legitimate to the public, we also must be committed to a degree of transparency. We've already followed the public to understand the true extent of the corruption hanging over the Japanese politics. Thanks to them, the guilty officials have essentially become public enemies. With this in mind, the Prime Minister has decided to allow the citizens of Japan to observe the House of Representatives' sessions. By no means are we moving forward, drastically changing our legislative system. Indeed, our Prime Minister simply wishes for the public to m monitor or see some manner of token appeasement. There are other potential benefits. Should anyone be caught cheating during the next session, that is most certainly worth the price of said appeasement. We get more stability, which is very, very good. Sweeping political anti-corruption measures. I want to get rid of that as much as possible, but obviously it's going to take some time. 15% support, huh? That really sucks. Oh, no, 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 no. Cut the military. Cut it, 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 cut it. A minus 19 billion. Not bad. Hey, that's getting much better, actually, for us. Oh, we're running out of places to build stuff. Ooh, if that's the case, can we go nuclear? Nowhere on in Japan can we do that. Okay, then. Uh, Radar? We have no... Yeah, just for defensive purposes, we got to get some radar. Especially in Hawaii as well. So, that'll be important. Do we have infrastructure here? Oh, we, we have it built. Or we have it planned to be built. That's good. Just in case, I'm going to build up the... Oh, that's already built. 10 out of 10. That's pretty good. Ooh, actually, what could help? Because eventually we will hit a fuel crisis. But happy 1965, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Can we build anything else around here? Probably not. There you go. Cool. A day of the diet. The school trip into the central Tokyo had been amazing so far. Kawan Ryu had visited the capital once before. This time, he was old enough to truly appreciate the sights around him. It certainly beat his quiet village by a wide margin, he thought. During the long hour bus ride, the classes teacher... Kagawa-san had taken the opportunity to go into greater detail about what their trip was about. The government had begun a new initiative to promote an interest in politics in the younger generations. Part of this involved taking a few classes to visit the Imperial Diet Building, where they go get to witness politics in action. Kagawa-san was careful to remind their students that they were to be exceptionally well behaved in the Diet Building, as it was that place that the future was decided. Ryu vowed to remember that. To the disappointment of the class, they were not... Uh, let in through the grand front entrance of the National Diet Building. Instead, they entered through the side door and had their bag searched. With that done, the children were finally allowed into the building proper, where they were greeted by a Mihara-san, who was to be their guide. Ryo listened diligently to Mihara-san's descriptions of the diet's many rooms and functions, but it was a stunning architecture that truly captured his attention. The central hall, with its ornately carved walls and arches, landscape paintings, and its shining glasswork stuck with Ryo the most. Mihara-san did a good job of capturing the class's action attention. So when he announced that they would now be attending a session of the diet, many of them were quite excited. The House of Representatives' chambers was equally as impressive at the entrance hall, but they had a benefit of comfortable seating. As the grand chamber filled with the representatives of the diet, Rio was eager to hear what they would be discussing. As it turned out, the meeting of the diet was in fact rather dull. For an entire hour, they discussed a little more than budget deficits. When the Ro Rowan Rio returned home, his parents were eager to hear about his school visit to the Imperial Diet. I had fun, was a simple but truthful response. Could 
he be a future prime minister? Public approval goes up. Great. And we shall end this longish episode with something else like pardon non-endorsed political opponents. The non-endorsed members of the House of Representatives are in truth only united by their opposition to the Taisei Yonku Sai. Apart from this shared goal, they are a mixture of politicians from all ideologies and regional interests. Due to their resistance towards working with us, many of these non-endorsed representatives have ended up with bogus charges against them in the hopes that they will bring the rest of their numbers in line. We care a little for the fate of the non-endorsed, but this is a way to set us apart from the rest of the YSK. As tedious as a Prime Minister might be, or might find the independence, he has chosen to pardon their imprisoned brethren. This will certainly irritate the rest of our party, but not much without carrying a reward. The pardons will do much to calm the independence and ensure that the public at all is well with Japanese democracy. We hardly need to use extra legal means to stifle the opposition anyways. We lose political power, stability, research speed, ideology, of defense for 90 days, but the public approval goes up. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. We have had quite a snag in terms of economy, which really hurts us, but things are starting to maybe look up just a little bit. But if you enjoyed the episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I, I will see you tomorrow as we watch Russia slowly and slowly more reunify, and hopefully we will dig out of our corruption mess. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.